Hello everyone, my name is Triton Perrin and I'm here today bringing you a video about using thickness. I was requested to make a video about this a while back, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to explain everything, like what, what, what examples I wanted to use, because I usually do everything from memory, but it's, it's hard to do that when it comes to thickness. And I, I wanted to make sure I explain everything correctly. So I uh, found two examples that I'm going to use here. And before we get into any explanations about how things work, what, you know, what is this, what is that, I just want to show you a problem here. This is a just like cut out of a game, basically. It's White's turn. Black, uh, Black has made some nice influence here, nice thickness. And White decided that he wants to expand along the upper side to uh, nullify the influence and to make a couple more points with his enclosure. So white decides to play here. Now I want you to look at this board, um, just this part of the board, and try to figure out where you personally would play. You should pause the video and take a little bit of time to figure that out. So there are many different moves that you can choose here, but what's really important is uh, not necessarily the move, but the idea idea behind the move. Because when it comes to using thickness in Go, it's more about how you use it, like what, what idea you come up to use it than it is about um, the move that you end up playing. Because there's, there's always a few options when it comes to moves, but there aren't as many options when it comes to um, the goal that you're trying to achieve or the idea that you're trying to use. So I want to show you the bad idea versus the good idea. And so the bad idea here is something like this capping move. White will respond, of course, and um, you can do something in the corner if you really want to. But this move here is really just helping White fix uh, shape issues here. And it looks to me like this move is trying to make some points here. And yeah, if Black gets another move, then maybe black will make 12 points at the most in this little area. But it's going to be very hard for black. In the meantime, white is going to solidify some points over here, maybe something in the corner. Um, black might be able to live really small in this corner, but that's not a very big accomplishment. It's not the move that's necessarily, necessarily a problem, because these two moves aren't bad moves, but they just aren't appropriate moves. They don't have the right feeling, the right idea behind them. So like you could also try things like this one to get white to respond and, and try to build directly or uh, you can try to build uh, on a larger scale, but eventually you're going to have to come back and this will be good enough for white because white is still solidifying quite a few points in the corner while you are barely doing anything in the center here. So let's look about let's look back at this and let's try to think of the good idea. If leaning on this stone and trying to make points in the center is a bad idea, then there's really only one other thing that you can do here, and that is to try to do some sort of attack. This move threatens the weakness in this shape in the corner. Uh, there's just like there's a couple moves that uh, black can play to harass this group. And it also threatens to attack this stone. So white really has two options here. White can defend the corner, make it nice and solid. But then, and now it looks like black was able to get the extension and white invaded. So what can black do here? And this this is really this was really the question I was asked: is how do I how do I use my thickness to attack? Um, people always say push towards thickness. But uh, whenever they play them play a move, it never results in, in what they're expecting. When you are in a situation like this, the most simple way to push your opponent's stone into your wall is to lean towards it. That's why there's a, a saying that uh, you should attack with the knight's move. So that's the first move you should try. That's the first move you should think about. And here it actually sort of works. If black plays the knight move here, the normal thing you have to worry about is what happens if white decides to cut. Well, uh, here's one simple cut, but if white cuts like this, black is perfectly fine with just giving away that stone and solidifying this area. Now, in 
these variations where uh, Black was trying to make points here, yes, he is possibly going to be able to make a couple points. Uh, in this variation, Black still has the potential to make points in the center here, but has also picked up a few points for himself. And White has only slightly expanded the amount of points that were in the corner. So the cut doesn't work. The cut doesn't work for White um, because the result, the end result is too good for Black. So if we go back, since the cut doesn't work, that means that White more than likely just has to jump out. If uh, White jumps out here, you can continue to lean. A diagonal move, the Knight's move and the diagonal move, very good ways of pushing your opponent towards the influence. And you have to be sort of severe when you're trying to do something like this. Uh, depending on what else is on the board, you may have to back off or jump or something. Just thinking about attacking here. Black can play this Hane and pull back because white has to fix this cut or else these stones are dead. Of course, white doesn't have to do anything right away. White could push. But now black can Hane or black can just extend. And uh, this cut is still there. This cut is can still be used and it's going to be very hard for white to actually do anything this group even though it's not completely solid it's a little bit thin here as long as you can keep these stones separated away from the corner then it doesn't matter if white can capture a stone here like even with this backing off move if white decides to come out you could potentially cut or you could try to see if this move is okay and Maybe try the Hane here now, and you're just trying to continuously push towards this group. I think the biggest problem that people have when it comes to this is that they're worried that their group will die. But here, for example, Black doesn't have any worries. White has to play a move to protect this cutting point, protect this peep, to get rid of the second eye here, and get rid of the potential for the second eye all over the place. So there's too many moves that White needs to play. If white does something like this, black can peep and cut, and this is going to be super difficult for white to deal with. That's no good. And if white, of course, if white just uh, protects the peep and the cut and all that stuff, I don't know the best way to do it. Maybe like this, black just takes the second eye. There's nothing that he has to worry about. So when pushing your opponent towards your wall, it really is as simple as this. You have to, like, a, you attack with the knight's move, or if you can cap the opponent, like if, if black was strong over here, maybe he'd be able to cap and do something. But just play the knight's move to attack, play diagonal moves to attack, Hane, uh, you need to expose cuts and expose weakness, and it's uh, it can be complicated, but even if this group doesn't die, Black is still going to end up with something here because in these previous variations, white has like a 25 point corner. But in these sorts of variations, white is struggling with a weak group and black will be completely fine. I can't really show more here because it depends on the rest of the board uh, about whether what white can do, what white can try, etc. So you just need to know that if you have... Um, your opponent's stone overextended into your side, you need to try to attack. So I covered what happens if uh, white decides to protect the corner. If white uh, reads that out and thinks that that's too good for black, he can try to just jump out or lean. There's, there's plenty of moves to try. Uh, it depends on the whole board, but basically you just don't want your opponent to connect up to the group, to the corner. So you can just jump out. Uh, that could be entirely possible. You could like do some sort of peep and jump out thing. And uh, depending on what else is on the board, you could try something like this. This is, again, another leaning tactic to expose weakness in your opponent's shape. You want them to do a Hane like this so that they have to come back and protect their cuts. But even if you aren't able to be as aggressive, just jumping out and uh, forcing them to jump out is going to be okay. Uh, at this point, it just depends on what else is on the board. If Black has a position over here, maybe he'll be able to play M3 and threaten the corner. 
or he'll be able to play Q3 and take the corner away and make it into a weak group. There's lots of possibilities there. And so the idea was not to build points in any way. The idea was to attack so that you could get rid of points and to make white worry about a weak group throughout the rest of the game. When black leans on the stone, black's not getting very much, but white is getting solid points. When black attacks the stone, white's not getting any solid points anywhere. Black is just getting more influence to affect other areas of the board, and that's sort of the point of attacking. So now that we've uh, talked about this position, uh, first of all, I, I want to mention that uh, this is definitely an overplay. Black 100% needs to invade and attack in some way. Uh, it just depends on the rest of the board about whether or not, like about what you can get away with. But So white should have actually just did a two space here because if black does this, this is making points with thickness again. Black's not getting very much. If white ever has to worry about this, he can do some sort of capping move, attachment, any sort of thing here, and black's not going to be getting that many points. But the most important part about this shape for white is that he doesn't have to worry about being attacked. So let's go on to the other example I wanted to show. So this is actually where I feel most um, players have a problem with using influence. Because on this board, uh, like these three stones here are super uh, safe and secure, and it's really hard to attack them without another move. But if you play another move, they're just going to defend, and it'll be fine for them. So it's really hard to see how to use these stones because the influence is being projected along this direction of the board, and white already has a solid group that's going to be hard to attack. So what do you do? Pause the video and try to find the move that you might want to play here. So for this, uh, let's go over the bad idea first. Because as I said before, it's not necessarily the move that you choose. It's the idea behind the move that you chose. When it comes to certain situations, you don't have to have uh, an overarching plan uh, or any sort of idea of what you are trying to accomplish. You can just play a move. But when it comes to thickness, you have to come up with a plan. You have to come up with an idea. And so I'm going to show you the, the bad idea first. So let's say this thickness looks like you could probably make some points because you also have something over here. It looks possible. But if you want to make points, you have to prevent white from pushing at D10. And you don't want to push here because that'll just give white points. So here's a cool move. Um, if white pushes in now, then black can push in at C9 and... There's Aji with the cutting points here. This is a this is a really cool move, actually. Something that you should uh, keep in mind. White doesn't have to respond, so he just plays here. He wants to nullify the influence, but Black just doesn't care. Just wants to keep building. So White builds up and tries to. Moses kind of asking, "Can I come in further?" Black says, "No." White says, "Please, no. Come on." And. Black just solidifies this area, kind of closes this off. It's starting to look like a couple of points now. So uh, white jumps up here. And white has to defend because uh, that's no good. You don't want to be attacked. Don't want your stones cut off. And But black also has to uh, respond here. And it looks like black accomplished his goal. I mean, this feels like... Uh, like if I was playing this game a long time ago, I would have felt really good about myself for making so many points here because what black did end up making about 30 points here. The problem is white sort of solidified this top area. White got a couple more points here. White still has this large like 20 or 25 point corner and it's white's move. So black was building in Gote. Yes, black did end up getting about 30 points here, but if you actually count the score, the game is really close. So white can come back and defend here at Q14, take this corner here, just attach to take part of the corner, you know, do anything like that. And black's going to have a hard time because he's already invested so many moves here and he can't make more points in this area or more points in this area. His only place to make points is here. So he has to try some sort of invasion. But because of all these exchanges, any sort of invasion up here is going to be very difficult to pull off, especially depending on what white plays next. So this is definitely the bad idea because this didn't change the balance of the game. So this move 
it's a cool move, and uh, he was able to build 30 points, but the exchanges he was making in order to get those points were no good for him. So let's try to think of the right move to play. And Black actually has a really cool move, and that is this invasion here. Now I mentioned in the other example that you want to try to attack something. Like, you know, um, your opponent is extended too close to your wall, you attack it. This doesn't seem like you're using the wall at all uh, when you look at this, but you are actually using the wall very well. Because of the wall, white is limited in the options that they can choose to attack your stone. For example, a very common move, some sort of attachment. However, black has this wedge because if it goes like this, black has this ladder here. And this influence is going to really help with this ladder. Black may or may not need to exchange a move over here, but white has to worry about this ladder. So white can't really play this way. So if white defends on this side, then black has a ladder on this side. So white shouldn't attach on top because it gives that wedge, which creates defects in his shape. So if he just backs off like this and you uh, get some sort of living, you know, black's going to live somehow along the top. But white also is going to have these cutting points. Black has a huge wall, so black wants to cut. So if white wants to prevent some sort of cutting thing, he has to try to find a move to save those cuts or to uh, fight back, which will be very difficult because of this wall. Again, it's very, very strong. So if we go back, uh, this attachment's not quite that great. There's also a kick here, but black has this kind of tricky move like this. If you cover, we're back into the ladder variations. And so this is no good for white. So any sort of ladder is going to be very hard for white to do anything with. Uh, with this invasion, white can't attach here. Uh, kicking is not that great because even if black doesn't play this move and just stands up, black sort of has accomplished his goal. He's going to be able to connect to these three stones very easily or just jump out into the center. And white isn't getting any points here. And so the balance of the game is actually still going back and forth. Like it's, it's still a close game, just like it was when black made all of those exchanges, except now it's a much more simple game for black. Black was able to invade black, may be able to come back and take this, uh, depends on how the attack goes for white. There is a good move here for white to play. And that is some sort of, uh, separation like this but it's going to be easy for black to make life here because there's just so much room. So if the very if it goes like this, white is white white has a little bit of strength here now, but this wall is negating anything that white's going to be able to do here. Black is more than likely alive and if he doesn't even have uh, if he, if he doesn't have one uh, two eyes on the top, he's still out into the center. So this is a fantastic result for black. Black doesn't have to worry about anything. Maybe you think uh, because there's attachments, it's easy for black to live. Maybe you should play on this side. But this is difficult too because if you play on this side, you kind of have to continue the attack somehow. And in order to continue the attack, you have to lean on this group here or you have to try to prevent these two groups from connecting. So you should probably play on this side. But after black jumps here, you still have to stop him from connecting. And then black can harass this group severely. So it's very hard for white to actually deal with this situation. The most simple way to play for white is, of course, just to do this and get this result. The game is not over for white. It's still a game. But black's the only one with potential now. The points are very close. So maybe white can invade here. Uh, maybe white needs to come back and protect this because he still needs another move here in order to turn this into points and uh, it just seems like a game still so that's really what i wanted to talk about in this video and i wanted it to be fairly short so that I, uh, you didn't have to focus on too many different things that i talked about so let's try to think about uh, the ideas that i talked about in this first if your opponent extends too close to your thickness you should invade and you should attack you shouldn't try to make points by leaning 
because your opponent's going to be making points while you make points. And maybe you won't even be able to solidify any of yours. And when it comes to attacking, it is hard to figure out how to push your opponent towards your stones. But the first move you should always think of is the knight's move, because you want to attack with the knight's move. That's the proverb. And you don't have to worry about stones being cut off as long as uh, this R9 stone stays separate from the corner, then, then you're, you're going to accomplish your goal. And the other thing that's very important about uh, thickness is that sometimes you can't expand from it. Sometimes you can't be sure how to attack, like because it looks like you want to attack this solid group here, but it's it's too solid. It's too difficult to attack. You kind of need to play a move and have your opponent tanuki, which is unreasonable, of course. And so sometimes when you have thickness in the center, the best way to use it is to invade somewhere, even if it's not close to what it is. And you're, you're, you're not going to be pushing anything towards your thickness unless... Uh, your opponent lets you attack these two stones here. This is a difficult invasion for white to deal with because most ladders are going to be hard for white to deal with because they're more than likely heading off to this group of stones or over here to these three stones. And so white probably won't have a ladder for anything. And if white doesn't have ladders, that means he can't play severe variations like attaching and uh, maybe he can't do something like this. You know, there's too much uh, for white to worry about. So they have to try to come up with a, a simple move to attack. You know, as, as I showed before, it's just too easy for black to live in this area. And those are sort of the uh, the ideas behind using thickness, at least as, as far as um, I have been able to understand. And so I hope this video was helpful for the person who requested it and for anyone watching. Uh, if you want me to make uh, more videos about this, let me know in the comments, in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to uh, leave them down below. I hope you have a good day. See you.